Today, inshallah, we'll continue learning some of his way of education, some of his ways of teaching his companions, some of the etiquette of dealing with the communities around him. Today, we'll talk about how Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to deal with those that they used to be against him. Those that they used to be in the other side, fighting him back, disagreed with him, not following him. Is there any excluding in his way of dealing with the people? So we are now as Muslims, we apply something belong to him or belong to something else. Ikhwani, any person, if he trusts himself, any ideology, if this ideology is correct, you will never exclude anyone from the community if he is disagree with you. If you trust yourself, you have self-confidence, you will be calm down, smile, and ask him one question. Can you prove that I am wrong? Show me your evidence that I am not correct. No excluding, no expelling, no killing, no putting in jail, no anything from these bad things that we see in our history and our current life. We have to accept everybody as is. And if he can convince me, means he is correct. If I can convince him, means I am correct. But take it easy. Let everybody talk and listen to them. When I say everybody, I mean everybody, even your child, three years old or whatever. He is a human being. We have to give him the self-confidence. This is what Al-Quran taught us since day one. How many times we read in the Quran when Allah says, Qul hatu burhanakum. Say to them, O oh Muhammad, peace be upon him. Give me your burhan. Burhan means evidence, dalil. Show me. Convince me. And today I will give you two examples from the Quran to let you and me go back home today and think about, am I correct? Am I right in my way of dealing with my wife and kids and friends and workers and etc. etc. Am I correct? Or am I just want to be the Superman? I am the one who knows everything and everybody not. When I practice the excluding in my life, nobody knows nothing except me. I am the one. You should listen to me. I am the one who fit in this position, not anybody else. Is this Islamically acceptable? Why we are suffer? Why we have problems of, among the communities or among the countries or among the nations? Because everybody want to exclude the others. Everybody, he can't see anybody except himself, except his opinion, which is absolutely against Al-Quran and Sunnah. No, Ikhwani. You, do, you, can't, you can't practice this and say this is Islam. This is not Islam. Because down to the road, when you have this in your back mind, you will start making decoration for your opinion even if you lie. Even if you make up stories just to convince others that they are wrong, make up fake stories and fake evidences and related something to somebody while it's not there. Why I'm saying this today? Because when we said the month of Rabi' al awwal is the month of birth of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Somebody will come and say, you are celebrating his death moment, not his birth moment, because for sure he passed away in Rabi' al-Awwal. Guess what? Even if this is correct, I'm not celebrating his death. I'm celebrating something else. Even if I go and celebrate his death, 
he passed away with a victory. I hope to have it again in my life. He passed away with completing his message and his mission that Allah gave it to him. So I'm proud of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But I'm not. I'm celebrating in the West. This occasion because I know the culture that I live in. My son and my daughter, they know about everything around them. The Western occasions and they make it a big deal. So I want to give them something else. That hey, as Muslims, we have something to show. We have something to celebrate. And we have to tell them to remember that they are Muslims and they have Rasulullah Muhammad in their mind, their heart, their daily life. I want to give him a gift. And I say this is on behalf of your Rasul. To say I love Rasul. I love Muhammad. I'm talking about three years, two years old kids. They don't know nothing about politics and history. They know just they are child and they want to be happy with the gift. And they will remember that this gift on behalf of somebody, his name is Muhammad. And Muhammad is a good man because he gave me a gift. Yes, I agree with you. Somebody might celebrating this occasion the wrong way. I'm with you. The solution is not to cancel the event. The solution is to teach them. And instead of canceling the event, or claim that there is no event at all, and it's bid'ah, it's haram, teach me the right. Teach me the correct things. Spend the money that you spend it for nothing, for the dunya, by sending teachers to teach your ummah. And instead of say, we have to cancel it. Because Ikhwani has theory. If we have principle, if we have idea, if we have fact, and we have the applying of this fact, if the appliers are applying the fact or the principle wrong, I can't blame the principle itself. I should blame whom? The appliers. Somebody from our people over there they thought not to cancel the event and the principle and the idea because they apply it in, in, in a wrong way. If you go with this ideology, you will end up canceling all your religion. You will end up canceling all your life. No. I blame the one who apply it in a wrong way. And I have the courage because I trust myself to go and debate with him and teach him, hey brother, this is the right and this is the evidence. This is how the Quran taught us, قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ So this is my introduction for the examples. That's how you have to build your self-confidence, your trust. Because if I am correct, I trust myself, I will fear no one. I will be always up outside, hey, it's me. If you have something, come and show me your evidence. I will not hide myself and I will not use my muscles to exclude you. No excluding in our Islam, Ikhwani. And Nabi Muhammad, he let, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, not a hypocrite, he is the leader of the hypocrisy. Am I right? He let him stay in Medina and he lives in Medina with them and he used to pray with them in the masjid. And when he passed away, he served his janazah prayer to trust myself, to accept you as is. Then, if I can change your mistakes, I will show you my ability, evidences, power, knowledge, nicely. Nicely. With the proofs and the evidences. Let me go back and finish with the two examples from the Quran. How the Quran plant on the ground this ideology. You know, <clears throat> Darwin, Darwin when he come up with his uh, ideology or theory, he said to the people, if you can prove to me, or if you can show me two things, if you can be successful by doing two, th two things, you prove that I am wrong. He gave the people the way to, to mistake him, to put him down, to cancel his theory. This is how if you trust yourself, you'll be clear and open. 
not to say, I am the one who knows everything and you know nothing. This kind of character, the reason that we are suffering as Ummah these days is because of those characters. I am the one. I am perfect. I know everything. I am the one who fit for this position. Nobody knows like me. This is ikhwani, something we have to cancel and put in the trash. It's not belong to our religion at all. Example number one. Surat al-Masad. Surat al-Masad, it's a, it's, a, it's a news. Ten years before Abu Lahab passed away. The surah said, Abu Lahab, he is kafir, and he will stay kafir, and he will be end up in the hellfire. Am I right? Yes. Him and his wife. You memorize the surah? Tabbat yada Abi Lahabin, wa tab, ma aghna anhu maluhu, wa ma kasab, sayasla naran, that Lahab, wa mraatuhu hamalat, al-hatab fi jidi ahablu min masad. Ten years, Al-Quran is telling the community, Muslim and non-Muslim, this man, he will not be a Muslim. And he will be in the hellfire. What, if you are over there, what you could advise Abu Lahab to do? Answer me. To say, hey guys, your book says, I will not be Muslim. I will, okay, I want to say my shahada. Immediately he will demolish the Quran and demolish the Islam. This is how the Quran very clear. I'm challenging him. Ten years. No excluding Ikhwani. No excluding in our ideas as Muslims. We have to accept everybody and be stronger in your knowledge and challenge them. Not in the muscles. No, 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 no. In the mind, in the knowledge. Evidences. Prove to me. Qulhatu burhanakum nicely. Please learn this with your wife, with your husband, with your kids. Don't use your muscles. Use your mind. Listen to them. Let them teach you because we learn from our kids a lot. They know sometimes more than what we know. Be down to earth. Al-Quran since day one, he, he, he's over there. Show me. I'm telling you that you will stay non-Muslim, and he stayed non-Muslim. He could finish the da'wah, <laughs> Abu Lahab. His uncle, he worked 24 hours to put the da'wah down while the key was in his pocket to use it. But he didn't. This is how I respect the Qur'an and respect the ideas of the Qur'an. I'm not hiding, I'm not excluding no one. This is what I have. Show me something else if you have. Another example. Surah Al-Baqarah. The first page in chapter number two. سَيَقُولُ السُّفَهَاءُ مِنَ النَّاسِ مَا وَلَّهُمْ عَنْ قِبْلَتِهِمُ الَّتِي كَانُوا عَلَيْهَا سَيَقُولُ The letter seen in Arabic or the word سَوْفَ in Arabic means it will be in the future. So the meaning of the ayah, a few idiots from the, the community in the Muslim civilization over there, they will say why they turn their qibla from here to here or from here to here. Allah called them what? Idiots. If you over there, you will go and say what the Quran told the community that you will say it and you will be an idiot. I will not say it, am I right? And I will say the Quran, hey, nobody said what the Quran said, so the Quran is wrong, nobody's edit here. But guess what they did? They said it. Another evidence. So no excluding Ikhwani, don't be in that kind of character that, hey, it's me. As shaitan when he said, it's me, you know what happened to him. When God asked, Everybody to bow down to Adam. What the shaitan, what Iblis said before he became shaitan. What Iblis said, it's me, I'm better than him. <coughs> He's done. The moment that you consider yourself better than anybody else, 
It's done. That's the moment that you are not exist. And I will not, and nobody will respect you. Even you will not respect yourself because you know you are a liar. You are lying. Be down to earth and say the truth. And when you say something about somebody, don't change the fact, don't modify his statement. Say it as is. Be honest. <laughs> Abu Sufyan, radiallahu anhu, before he became Muslim, <laughs> he went to uh, meet uh, the Roman Empire, uh, Heracl over there, and Heracl he was a religious man. He was a religious man, and he's very smart. He let Abu Sufyan came down to him and sit on the ground, and he let the other uh, delegate people stand behind him, but his face toward him. He can't see what they are doing or what they are saying. And he told he, him, I will ask you questions. And you guys, if he lies, just move your head down and up. Don't say nothing. So I can, and I can understand that he's lying to me. And he asked him about Prophet Muhammad You know what Abu Sufyan said? I attempt to lie. But I thought about the history, what the people will say about me. I will not accept to be a liar even upon my enemy. These are days we are lying on behalf of each other about everybody, even our scholars. Just to prove that we are right or we are correct or I am the one. No, the amana is to say what others said as is. Don't modify nothing. Don't add. Say it as is. Then, if you can't understand it, or you don't understand it, others will understand. Prophet Muhammad, he said this to us. He said, Rahimallah, or Naddarallahu, Mri'an Samia minna shay'an, Fabalagahu kama Samia. May Allah pride the face of a human being or a man. He heard from me something and he delivered it as he heard it. Then he said that the, the, the reason It might the one who will receive it in the future have more power to understand it more than the one who delivered it to him. So don't put your input in the statement of no one. For that reason, when you have translation of the Quran, there is, there is code, no publish or no publisher department will accept any book without this code. You have to bring the, the text as is, the Quran text as is, then the tafsir from any book as is, then you translate the tafsir, not the text itself. And you have to be what? Honest, accurate. Don't put your input in the translation. You have to translate what the for example, Ibn Kathir said, as is. If you want to add something from your own, you have to tell me that this is my input. We read this in the Quran a lot of time about changing the, the will. As a, if you witness a will, you have to say it as is. Don't modify, don't change, don't, don't add. Be honest. If, if you trust yourself, why you want to lie? But when the people will lie, Ikhwani, when the people will use their muscles against you, if they are what? Down and weak. And they know that they are not in your level. And this is what Quraysh government did to your beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu He used to talk to them nicely in Mecca, am I right? But what they did, they expelled his companions and they prevented them from praying in the masjid, reciting the Quran. How many times Abdullah ibn Mas'ud been beating up? Abu Bakr, Umar, how many times they beat them up because they recite the Quran in the masjid or they pray in the masjid? What you are doing, you publish my religion, but you don't know that. But if you keep me as is, let the people judge me without any outside inputs. Let me market in the market my items. And if they want to buy, let them buy. And if you can't compete, compete. But with no muscles or force 
because you are in power as government or wherever in Mecca, you put your uh, power to stop. And subhanAllah, they put all the power, but they didn't stop the Islam. Islam now, they, alhamdulillah, they took over Mecca and all the area over there. And now, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, in everywhere, this is not an evidence that Islam is the correct divine message on this earth. See, where is the movement in the universe? From which religion to which religion? Everybody is moving to your religion. Everybody is moving to the Islam. Because ikhwan, even the other, other side, if they follow Jesus, for example, correctly, they would be Muslims. Am I right, brother? He just converted last year. The true followers of Jesus are the Muslims. So you have to be proud of yourself and take care of your network. A word, if you say it while you are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it might change the life not of one person. His wife, his kids, the grandkids count another thousand years from today. We talk about nation. Nation, they will be in the hidayah because of a word you said it. Or you are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah in this moment to give us the chance to serve his religion and to serve his deen and to serve his ummah and to serve his Quran and to serve his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sunnah of way of life. We ask Allah to give us the hidayah for us, for our wives, for our kids, for our brothers and sisters. Ameen, ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum.